Hi, everyone, and welcome to another podcast where we're here to talk about research questions and how do we formulate the right ones for our study, for our research. You know, there's a lot of times that you'll see graduate students, doctoral students, or even emerging researchers who don't really know how to ask the right questions for the ends that they seek. So we're going to look at some frameworks that can guide the development of effective research questions. So let's go ahead and get right into it. The framework that I like to use is called FINER, F-I-N-E-R. We're going to start with F. The F is feasible. You know, a lot of times, uh, doctoral students in particular, they want to solve the world. They'll have a research question like, how can we improve reading instruction in K-12 environments? Well, you know, you know there's an, an indefinite number of ways to be able to do that. Um, but we need to focus narrow, and we need to focus on something that's achievable that's able to be managed. So we need to think about how can it be feasible? Well, number one, how many, um, what's an adequate number of students or teachers or participants in your study? That's one consideration. Secondly is, do we have the adequate technical expertise to be able to accomplish this particular study? I know in my own doctoral work at LSU, I wanted to come up with a new reading assessment for literacy education. However, I didn't have the instrumentation knowledge, knowledge of how to ensure high rates of validity and reliability and so on. So I pushed that project to further on in my career. It wasn't a good starting place. Third is uh, still within the realm of feasibility. Do we have appropriate resources, including time and money, to be able to accomplish this? If we're trying to get, let's say, 100 teachers involved, are we going to be able to pay them or compensate them in some way? If not, we need to adjust our scope to make it much more manageable. So that's the F for feasible within the finer criteria. <clears throat> Second is we have, it has to be interesting, right? If something um, doesn't really uh, get people excited about the study, if it's not <clears throat> current in some way, then why do it at all? There's a lot of research that is duplicated just because people weren't aware of the extant literature in their respective fields. And as a result, they didn't add anything to relevant literature at the time. And as such, really didn't um, you know, uh, complete and, and what would constitute adding something to the field with their dissertation study. And technically, they shouldn't have graduated to begin with. The third area in the finer guidelines is novel. It has to be something new, something that confirms or refutes or extends previous findings, particularly with respect to quantitative research. If we're looking at more qualitative dimensions, <clears throat> again, it still has to have a novel feel for it. So let's say that um, you know, one study that I did, for example, was looking at second graders and can we teach them Greek and Latin word parts in second grade? It had previously been known in, in college areas as students study for medical uh, school entry uh, or as part of medical school uh, education. We also, it, it went down to high school level where we found that Greek and Latin word parts had a uh, high impact on English language learning in general because they serve as 60, 70 percent of the English language structure as a whole. Um, but it also went into middle school and elementary schools. And so I had seen it done all the way down until third grade. So I actually wanted to investigate can we extend this down to second grade? And the findings that I saw were that if students had mastered phonics already, then we could do that in second grade. Otherwise, it would actually take away from their learning. So that was something that I was able to add to the extant literature with that extension of the research. The fourth dimension of the finer criteria is ethical. How can we ensure that this protects the participants in your particular study? So for example, uh, if you're doing work in an elementary school, do you have to video? Can you instead use audio tape? Can you instead use transcripts from your uh, observations? Can we do more things to be able to protect the most vulnerable populations? Those are definite considerations that you have to use, especially prior to your IRB submission. That goes with respect to any field that you might be in. And the last area is R within finer guidelines, and that's relevant. How is it relevant to the current <clears throat> knowledge in your field, to current scientific knowledge, um, to policy and practices, and as well as future research? So relevancy um, can be determined, especially if you're looking at current trends or even hot topics in your field. 
I do a lot of work with what's hot in the field of literacy alongside my peers. And that is making sure that your work is advancing in the field uh, according to topics that have or are currently in the limelight, as well as maybe topics that haven't received that much attention recently. Those are some ways to ensure that your research is relevant and stays on the cutting edge, on the cusp of pushing the field forward. I hope this finer guidelines has been helpful for you. And if you have any questions, feel free to shoot them out anytime. Take care.